This tutorial today um, is going to show you how to make a shadow box card. Um, it's a whole card because it has a front and it opens and has an inside. Okay, so we're going to look at different ways of doing it, but I've come up with a simple one that can be adapted to any size box and any size frame. <coughs> so I took my picture and I measured it and I've made a base card that is two centimetres bigger all the way around. Okay, I've chosen two centimetres because I want to make a two centimetre box around. So I put my picture to the side for the moment and because I want the side to be two centimetres up, two centimetres across, right, I've come up with this. So we need a flange to stick down, which is one centimetre. Then we're coming up two centimetres, across two centimetres and down two centimetres. And you need something to stick it onto the background. <clears throat> so we've got one, three, five, seven, plus anything. Now, I have cut some pieces of card, two pieces that are exactly the length of the card, and I've cut this ready. I've scored one already for this half of the card, and I'm going to get my scoreboard out, and I'm going to finish scoring the other side and then cut it down. The last measurement does not matter because you're sticking it onto the back of the card and it's not going to be seen. So we're going one, three, five, seven. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle that line so you realise it's it can be anything. Now, okay, so that's going to go that side, that's going to go that side. Take that away. So this is our box. Normally, when you make these shadow boxes, you would need a huge A3 piece or 12 by 12. So we're going to take the side piece first and the flange here I fold away from me and then everything else I fold towards me. So I'm going to take my bone folder and make sure these are nice crisp creases. So, if we take a look at this, so you can understand where we're going, this base card is going to be stuck onto a piece here. Uh, and we're going to have two centimetres up, two centimetres across, two centimetres down, and the flange will be stuck on there. Okay, so... The easiest way of doing this is to take some double sided tape And I'm going to put this piece on here so I can still move it all around. Make sure it's lined up properly with this piece here 
and then when I'm ready, fold that over. So that is stuck into place and you can see immediately we've got one wall built. So I'm going to take the next one, pull the flange towards me and all the rest are going away from me. Okay, it, I know they're mountain and valley but it's easier for me to understand pull one towards you, take, pull one away. So I'm now going to put double sided tape on here. If your tape is just that little bit long, just fold it in. Same again, place your flange to the front and you can wiggle it around to get it right and when you've got it matched up, simply fold that over and it's stuck in place. So we now have our two walls. Right. <clears throat> These are going to be slightly different because we want one piece that is mitered. So I'm going to put my flange towards me. All the other score lines away from me. Repeat with the other one. So flange towards me. And all the other pieces away from me. Now this is the only difficult bit um, of the process. You have to remember we our um, piece here across the top is two centimeters. So I'm going to put this on here and I'm going to score down two centimetres to my second score line. So that's all there is to it and I'm going to just flip it over so that I don't confuse you. So two centimetres down to the second line. So I'm going to try and show you that. So two centimetres which is the width I want the, the frame down there. Okay, and I'm going to take this one. So flange upwards and I'm going to come down two centimetres and it's easy enough to flip and come down two centimetres. That was really the most difficult bit of the whole process. So I'm going to cut down the two centimetres to there. Now what I do now, I can bring this up here, there's the two centimetres I've cut and I'm going to cut a diagonal line from where I finish to the, the next corner um, of the next score line. So let me show you. We go into there and straight across to the next score line. Let me fold that there and you can see. So I've created a mitre. So I'm going to go to this side, turn it and straight across haven't drawn on it or anything like that. It's just an easy cut across. So I'm going to go on this one, down to the second line where I've scored, swivel and across 
to that. Down, swivel, and in one cut straight across. Now you can see I've got these shaped pieces. So I'm going to apply double-sided tape. All the way along there. I haven't quite got enough room to do this, so I'm just putting an extra bit on there. You can cut this as as small as you like, so long as it will tape down. Well, right. We're going to do open oh, those same way as before. We're going to line this up on the box and then when it's in place fold over and so it's stuck down. Repeat with the other one. You can see that if you were doing this with a large sheet of paper Hard. and you made a mistake you've ruined that whole piece whereas this way if you do make a mistake it's only in one smaller piece and not everybody has got um, large sheets of card in their stash so line it up Fold it down and fold over. Now we've got a mess on the back so we will cover that over before we finish but this is the important bit. Now the shaped pieces will go last. So I'm going to use very strong tape for this. I prefer to use tape rather than um, wet glue because I want this to stay in the same place in the right place without moving. So I'm going to do all four flanges. This also shows up nicely on the video rather than white tape. Right, almost there. Now one of the things that makes it awkward on other tutorials is getting this flange in the right place because you've got to make sure this is at right angles. So there's a dead simple way of doing it. You have one, two, three, four score lines. We are going to fold along the third score line and you're going to trust that it's going to go in exactly the right place. So we go one, two, three, fold it over and trust that it's exactly right. Okay, don't forget we're doing the straight edge pieces first. So I'm going to take the next one. There, we count down one, two, three, and fold along three. Now, watch this now is exactly right. All right, no, no messing around that these are the right angles. Now, this piece, when we put it on, and this comes down you can see that this is going to now have mitered corners 
there and it's going to be a beautiful box now how to do it exactly the same way flatten those out let me get my tricky tool for this now same way as before one two three fold it over and it goes down it will overlap these flanges here but don't worry okay take the next one okay one two three fold over there right now we can stand up all of these and you can see that the straight edged ones will come in and be covered by these angled pieces. Now obviously we have to um, stick it down and the only place we can stick it really is these corners. So I'm going to take my wet glue and I'm going to put some glue across that corner. And then I've got some elastic bands. So I'm going to slide that in, wipe any excess glue and take my elastic band and adjust that. So take another elastic band, go in the other direction and I then take another elastic band and go this way and another elastic band and make sure you just wipe any excess glue. So there is my completed frame, just needs to dry for a couple of minutes. Now the test of this now is this was the picture we started with and when I put my border on it that will fit exactly in the middle. Yay. Right so I've now prepared a top wrap to go the card on the front and what I've done is I've taken exactly the same measurement as the base card that we started with and I've added two centimetres onto this side. So we're going to take the scoreboard and we're going to score two centimetres um, There's our thing, and that is going to fit on the top, double sided tape down there, and then that is going to open to reveal our card. Okay, so we're going to leave that for a couple of minutes and then come back when the glue has um, fixed this. So, glue should be dry by now, so we remove the elastic bands and we have a really sturdy base. Okay. So we now take a main picture which I've added a very small black outline to. And we're going to stick that into the back and it drops beautifully in there because we've measured it. Right now before we put the top wrap on we want to do all our decoration. 
So we've got a picture here and we want to put some depth into it. So you can add sticky fixes to bring out detail. Okay, but I've done some uh, die cuts here and yes you can say they're far too big but we'll see that in a minute. I've got some scraps of pieces of acetate. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend one end of the acetate, decide how big I want the support and I'm going to chop that off and do the same height there. So when I fix that in, I think I'm going to cut that down a little bit. You can adjust these as you go. Right, so that will make me a bridge to fix stuff to and I can then put my design on the top of it. So I'm just going to fix that into that corner. And just let that glue go off for a second. Um, now I've got here a bench which I don't particularly want to cover over. Um, so I think we'll put some extra bits on the outside here. Right, so let's have a look what we're going to do in here. You know what we can do. Let's do another bridge. Fold that over there. Say nothing of this needs particularly measuring. glue on that and tuck it in the case there. So if I can now bring that up here, I don't think you'll see it, but I've got a brace along here and a brace up here because I'm going to take this lovely piece here to come up and I'm going to cut it and uh, cut that off there, cut that away up there and there. So I'm looking for a piece that's going to come flat up there and I can stick this because this is going to stick to our brace. There, can you see now I've got, lift it up, I've got a halfway point on there. So I've got plenty of other bits now. That I can add here. Now I've got some thistly bits. I did choose the colours that would tone in um, with my back, backdrop. So I'm now going to do those. Right, that will go in nicely. I think that needs to come out. That won't come out. So rather than have white showing, I'm going to snip that off. So that is going into the corner there. So that is starting to make my frame inside. That is my main picture, so I'm trying to keep away from that. And I've got another bit of the creeper here. Now, this one, I think if I snip off there, I can get that coming along the base. So 
Now on here, this was just the roots of the um, other plant, on the thistle, but I'm still going to use it onto there because I think it's an interesting shape. So I'm going to stop at that point there at the moment. Right, now I then took a piece of acetate. Now our base card was 14 and a half by 19 and a half and the acetate is going to be the same. So I'm going to take that and okay. make sure you've got um, clear um, tape otherwise it's going to show. The red liner tape is very good for this as well. Now, take my acetate place it on the bottom and let it drop down. Right, so there is my acetate in place. Obviously everything has to be done inside before we put that on. So I'm now going to take this and I've got a fence, a gate, a fence. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a small amount off the bottom to lower the fence. And I'm going to cut the gate off here. So my smaller piece of fence is now going to fix on that side. <coughs> You'll notice I wanted to keep the bench, so I'm keeping away from there, and that's why I've cut it on there. Don't forget you're fi fixing on acetate, so you can afford to put glue up the back of the fence. There's the next one, so we're, we're being drawn into the scene. And I've now got another piece of this. So I want to split this again in two. So I'm going to chop through there. These are only joined by tiny bits. Now, what I've done by splitting it into two, I want to use a piece up there and a piece on there. So I think what I'm going to do is take that onto there. That would be nice. Okay, so that bit goes onto that side. And this piece, let's trim that off. is bringing that up the side and I have some bits of the thistle 
ですね。I'm going to take a single bit of thistle and bring that up that side to match. And then this bit here, to trim that round. I'm going to bring that up. That's that. You can always play around with these bits until you commit the glue. So I'm going to come up there. Anything that hangs over, you're going to trim off. There. So there's our picture. Right. Now I come back here. And we've got the top wrap. So I'm going to place that onto there. And I'm going to put wet glue on here. I prefer tape, but just for speed. I'm going to pop that on there. And you can take your elastic bands if you're using wet glue. Just hold it into place. Now, I took a second picture, the same, same picture, and I just die cut it. It seemed a shame to put the same picture on the top, but I wanted a continuance through. So there is my picture there. There was a message there wishing you a day filled with joy and happiness. So I think I'm going to use that and I'm going to put a little pack board around that to tie it in with the rest. And instead of all that white on the background, I think I shall find uh, a muted um, backing paper that perhaps picks up these colours. Right, so I'll prepare this one with the border and we'll be back to finish off while this dries. Okay, so this should be dry by now. Let's just check it opens. Right, we've got one little bit that's come up there. So, right, you can add extra time. I'm trying to do it. Um, in a hurry in the, in the video. So there is a seam, top wrap comes on and a base card was 14 and a half by 19 and a half so I've taken half a centimetre off um, this to get it right. That will go straight onto there. Now don't forget we still have this to cover on the back so I've cut out another one very slightly smaller that goes over the back on that one. Turn that over and leave that to dry. Let's make sure this is slipped a little bit. There we go. So then we're coming with a topper on there. Now I've left about a half centimetre there. So I'm then going to balance this with about a half centimetre right angle there. Now I think what I'd probably do to finish this is three little black dots there, three little black dots there. So I've now got some scrap black and a small little hole punch. You could do it smaller ones with a, um, a normal office punch if you've got one of those. 
and then six. It's so, all circles, and I'm going to put them on my soft pad that supposedly makes the video quieter, but I'm not so sure. And a large ball tool, and just let them run underneath. underneath your ball tool. Don't try and hold them in place. Right, now this technique here means that you've always got um, what is called candy to make from your scraps. So I'm going to put one Like that a bit too much glue. You can choose whether you put the glue in the spout a bit on there and put the candy candy on. One, two, three on that side. Two and three. So there is the front of our card done inside of our card you can choose whether you put a panel to write on on this side or whether you put it on the back but there is your card and really beautiful so let's have a look at a few samples i'm going to leave that one there because that's our base this one here was worked more or less on the same um, sort of um, measurement for the main bit but note on here we've got a very much thinner frame okay now I've got thin frames on all the others so let's have a look this is the one that I did was was my first ever one and that was a learning experience so this one I've got multiple layers inside so when you turn it you can see all sorts of things this one here again beautiful one based on a square base now this one has nothing inside to give depth but it has got this lacy border all the way around the outside and if you turn it over, I've actually fixed a six by six card to the back. So you haven't, on all the others, you've got an opening. This one you haven't, but the card is at the back. Now, the next one I was going to dedicate to a lady called Rachel Young and her mum um, because she said how much she liked birds. So this one here I've got hope is like the bird that senses the dawn and starts to sing whilst it's still dark and we all need a bit of hope in today's uh, situation anyway surprise for you there is an aviary now I've taken real twigs out of my garden I've taken off pictures of birds off the internet that I can cut uh, sort of shrink right down yes it was fiddly but it was worth it a couple of little bird houses i had as dyes and i had a bird bath and i've cut that down um so that it is more in keeping with the size of the aviary underneath i've got some bits of um moss um 
that I use for various things. And finally, I've done um, a printed acetate where I've put, let me try and bring that right up to the camera. I've actually printed um, the hexagons on the top to make it look like the chicken wire on the Avery. So that's another technique that you can use. And I've also done some wooden surround and just put them around. Um, so that, that's not part of the frame, the frame's white. Um, and I've added this to just make it look as though you're looking into an Avery. So I hope you've all enjoyed that. Right, let's come back to this one because this was the only one I have done with the two centimetre um, border. Now, if you can think about what we did to begin with, so any size base card, right, and then you cut two strips to match top and bottom and you need to score them. So you have to think flange needs to be one centimetre, right? Then you need to think how, how high do you want your um, the depth of your box. It can be anything. So depth I had at two centimetres. You've got to think then the width of your thing. So uh, the width I could have one centimetre. And then you've got to have the depth again. So that needs to be repeated there. Two centimetres. And then any width for fixing. So if I add that up, that's one, two, three, four, five, six. So it means I need six centimetres plus the back bit. That's a technical term. So I just had a cup of tea brought to me and it's put me Totally off. <laughs> okay, so if we added one, two, three, four, five, six, your pieces would all be six centimetres extra and whatever you're going to have for your back bit. So if you were going to have, where's my pen gone? Let's grab a piece of paper. So if you were doing 15 by 15, so a six inch square card, you would need to add six centimetres and a back bit. So you would have six centimetres coming out there. six centimetres there, and six centimetres there, but you would need a bit extra so that that slips in behind. Okay, so each one of those would then be scored at one, three, four, six, and that would give you a one 
centimeter frame, two centimeters deep. So if you have any uh, problems with getting the right sizing, just um, contact me through um, the comments below and I can help you sort anything for a specific um, card that you want to do. So I hope that's made it a bit easier. If you start to work through following the video, I'm sure you will be absolutely fine. But the important thing is enjoy. And God bless.